So this is video three in Revit to Real, and where I'm at right now on the process is we have the topography in place. I've got the massing models for the building context in place, and I also have um, three different variables that I work through with the client in this case on different massing strategies for the project. So what I want to do at this time is move the topography to the CNC router for a physical model. Um, not, you know, depending on your CNC router and how good you are at running a CNC router, you might want to leave these buildings on in place and actually have them all cut out of one piece. I am not particularly great with a CNC router, and I would rather use a different process for the buildings, um, get them, you know, 3D printed out, um, and just really worry about the topography on the CNC. So what I'm going to do first is I need to establish a scale that I'm going to build this model at. And I don't want a huge model. You know, um, two, two feet, three feet by 18 inches or two feet is perfectly fine for the size that I'm looking for. So to begin to establish that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new sheet inside of Revit just so I can sort of understand what these models are going to be like at a certain size. So that's just the default Revit page template there and I'm gonna drag my site right onto this page. Actually I'm just gonna keep it off to the side a little bit so I can see it. So right now I know I had a site I had my site view at 1 to 40 and so this looks like it's gonna be about the right size. If I do a quick measure I know I am 2 feet 4 inches by 1 foot and change um, so that seems like a really good size, a really good scale for me to, to be working at. And, you know, if I wanted to look at other options, I know the default site inside of Revit is usually, usually set to 1 to 20. So if I look at that on my page, I can see that is a size of a model, you know, that's going to be um, almost 5 feet by 3 feet. And that's larger than I want to be uh, in this particular case. So back to my site view I'm gonna drop my scale down to 1 to 40 and then I'm going to go back into my sheet view inside of my sheet view I want to add a few lines to help me crop this down to a certain size so to do that I'm going to select my view and click activate view and then I'm going to use the model lines tool architecture model lines to draw a box that I want to crop this down to. So I'm just going to start by roughing in about what I think is going to be correct. And then I'm going to draw it to an exact size. So I'm selecting this line and I'm going to click on the overall dimension. And let's make it something really simple that I can remember. 1,000 feet wide. Select this edge by 600. So I'm going to select all of that and then move that box so that my site is basically right in the center of that. So I'm going to deactivate my view. And of course I could have done that um, inside of my site view. Doing it here um, sort of gives me that sense of exactly how big this model is going to be. So if I crop to those lines, I can measure roughly right to them now. And I know that this site is going to be, this model is going to be two feet by one foot three inches, roughly. So let's go back into my 3D view. And since I used model lines, those are going to show up everywhere. They're not view dependent like the annotation lines are. And what I'm going to do is, oh, I already have it turned on. Let's turn it off really quick. The section box is usually off by default in your 3D views. But what we're going to use is that section box tool, I'm going to turn that back on, it's in my view properties, to crop this portion of the site down to this 1000 by 600. The other thing that that's going to do for me, if you think about um, cutting a file uh, or printing a file, you know, cutting with a CNC router or printing a file, you'll see the site, the topography is just sort of a two-dimensional ribbon that is moving in three dimensions. So what I mean by that, it's, it doesn't have a thickness, this topography doesn't have a thickness at all. And most things that you're working with, 
need to have geometry on the sides and a lot of times even on the bottom as well um, to be able to, so the software can see sort of what is a solid, what is a void, what needs to be cut, what needs to be filled, so on and so forth. The section box tool will allow me to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch this to wireframe mode and I'm going to move my box and I wish it would snap to these model lines. I haven't figured out a way to do that, but I can get it close enough, you know. I'm going to move these to my model lines. And basically crop out the portion of the model that I want to keep. Not that. I suddenly selected the wrong object there. You want to make sure when you're selecting something, you'll see that blue arrow change to a slightly darker blue. That's when you know you have it selected correctly. So I've got that cropped down now for a model. The other thing that you'll see if I go from wireframe back to consistent colors is that section box has built geometry for me. It's given me these sides to work with. And it's those sides that will allow me to interpret this in another piece of software as solids and voids. Ideally, this would become something that's also um, watertight. You know, it would be a volume that would hold water. And this isn't quite there yet, but it's going to be good enough for the CNC router. Now, if you're really clever with the CNC router, um, or you're using really good material, you could probably leave these massing models on there as well. But this particular process, I'm going to use a 3D printer to print out um, these models, and with the CNC, I'm just going to get the topography. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these context pieces, and I'm just going to go ahead and hide that entire category. So now all that I have left are the roads and the terrain, the topography, right here. So I need to do one additional thing with the geometry inside of 3D Studio Max. And that is, if I, if I just cut this as is right now, I won't get an idea, I won't get an understanding of where the roads are on that model. It's just going to cut directly across the topography. Um, if you notice in Revit, and I would just really like to have this tool in Revit, but it's not there yet, something that actually gives this up and down I would love sidewalks, curbs, gutters, all that kind of stuff, and it's not in there yet. Um, hopefully, if enough of us will ask for it, we can start getting that. It would really be a positive impact on our renders, let alone building our models. But what I can start to do is manipulate this geometry inside of 3D Studio Max, as well as scaling the file down in 3D Studio Max, so that I'm essentially getting a 1 to 40 context model um, output from 3ds Max. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply use the export function. I'm not going to go through suite workflows. This is only going to go one direction. So I'm just going to go export FBX and I'm going to save this as Camino cap locks, Camino site save. I'm going to leave on the temporary hide and isolate because I don't want the massing stuff to come back. And now I'm going to switch over to 3D Studio Max. I'm going to go to the Big M, Import, Camino Site, Open. I don't really need the light or the camera. Let's switch this to the perspective view so that we can see what we have. So there's the model. You can see that I have edges right here to work with. And you can see that this is kind of a hollow model. If I was going to send this to a 3D printer, typically I would need to add one piece of geometry across the base so that this would actually be something that is, you know, watertight in how it works. Because I'm going with a CNC router, um, our CNC router anyway, it's a shop bot, pretty much reads from the top down. So it's really happy with, with there not being any geometry on the bottom. It really could care less. But what I do want to do is offset the roadways so that um, you can see them, so that they're identifiable on the model. So to do that, I'm going to select the road, and I'm going to click the Move tool, and I'm going to move it up. So you can see it's simply pushing up that particular portion of the road. And I want to do that 
by a factor of one foot. So I need to turn off the absolute here and move it up by a factor of one foot in the z direction. So that's not very much um, in terms of a 1 to 40 model, but it'll be enough to show up. Um, and it is probably more, hopefully more, than it would be in reality. Let's do this with the other groups of roads. And that's only, yeah, there's only two groups here. So we'll do one foot on this as well. Now, if you notice, this does leave a gap in the geometry. At first, I was really worried about that. And you can see this, the gap that I'm talking about is this little sliver right here. There's an actual gap in the geometry. It makes me a little bit nervous, but our CNC router, our ShopBot, just doesn't seem to mind it at all. It just cruises right across it, so works for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of this and group it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to scale this down to 1 to 40. Right now, this is still um, approximately 1,000 feet. If I use my measurement tool, I should be, let's go, let's change this actually from perspective to top, tools, measure distance, I should still be around a thousand feet across, yeah, a thousand, three feet, um, so I know that that's, that's pretty much correct. Um, it's still at one to one. I want to go ahead and scale this down to one to forty, and I could do that inside of the ShopBot software but I would far rather take care of it on my end. Um, this is not going to be a series on running a CNC router. We'll look at it uh, briefly in the next video, but this really is a series on preparing this. Usually when it comes to the CNC router, I turn it over to our shop team and say, here's the foam, here's my file, please cut, and they do an awesome job of it. So what I'm going to do with this is scale it down, and I do need to use the absolute transform. And I'm going to apply a scale factor to drop this to 1 to 40. And to help me with my scale factors, because I can't remember all of them, I have a really simple Excel file. So what I've got is 1 inch equals. So if this was a 16th inch model, I'd put in the number 1 inch equals 16 feet. And I would get my percentage of scale factors depending on my target location for where I'm sending the model. So my scale factor at a 16th, just to scale that down from 1 to 1 to a 16th inch scale, I'm taking essentially 1 over my 1 inch over 16 feet and multiplying that to convert to inches, which is 1 over 12, that point zero eight three three number, that's 1 over 12. And that gives me my scale factor percentage. So if I type in the number 40, 1 inch equals 40 feet, that's the number I get, 0.208% as my scale factor. And if anybody wants this Excel file, you can simply email me at dbeach01 at jury.edu. I'd be happy to share this Excel file with you. Um, but as I go through this series, I'll be showing you what the formulas are. You can simply grab these off the video as well and just quickly build your own. So what we're going to do is I've turned on my absolute transform. I'm going to use my scale factor of 0 0.208. 0 0.208 to scale down. Enter zoom in. I want to double check my dimensions. So I'm going to use my top view. And let's go tools, measure distance. And if I measure edge to edge, I should be about two feet. And I'm right on it. So I know that everything so far is working just as exactly as planned. So from 3D Studio Max, I'm going to take this file, do the big M, export, and I want to give our shop team a stereolithography file. So I'm going to send this to my desktop. I'm going to check STL as my file format. And again, call this Camino Site CNC. Save. And that is ready now to bring into the ShopBot software to do the CNC cutting. With the file at the uh, CNC router um, in our shop, uh, what we're doing is essentially setting up a toolpath um, inside of the ShopBot software. Uh, we have a four foot by eight foot ShopBot CNC router. Uh, it's an excellent machine. 
this is not a video on running the CNC router, but essentially what we're doing, uh, the basics of what we're doing right now is establishing the parameters of the print, or not of the print actually, I'm used to saying print, we're establishing the parameters of the cut by determining what tool we're going to be using to do the cut, what material we're going to be cutting out, and then looking at a preview of that cut uh, based on what the tool path is going to be defined by. From there, we're going to go ahead and launch the CNC router from the ShopBot software. So we're cutting out of just a really simple two foot by two foot piece of uh, building insulation, rigid foam insulation that we picked up at Lowe's. These are about $5 a sheet, so these are a relatively inexpensive model. And we're only go going about an inch and three quarters deep into this. So we have the insulation mounted to our cutting surface. If we wanted to go further than that, we could stack up about three or four of these for about a five to six inch deep cut. Um, this process is going to move back and forth pretty slowly, tracing the path until all the cuts are complete. This is about an hour, hour and a half long process. The final print, uh, you can see the roads, you can see the uh, base plate um, that was set for the massing models. Uh, the foam finishes really nicely and this is ready for a layer of paint and typically the paint that I'll use on something like this is just a simple white paint with the primer built into it. it needs to be a water-based white paint.